Have you heard about the Stoneheads on Easter Island? These magnificent stone statues, reaching heights of up to 10 meters and weighing up to 80 tons, remain a mystery despite their worldwide recognition. Why did the ancient inhabitants of Easter Island, with limited resources and technology, invest so much effort and time into creating these monumental sculptures? In this video, we'll try to answer that question. Let's start from the very beginning. Many people may not know, but Easter Island belongs to the Pacific Archipelago and is part of Chile. It was first discovered by the European explorer Jacob Rogovin on April 5, 1722. It happened to be Easter Sunday, hence the name of the island. The Dutch explorer became the first European to see and document the Moai statues. Although he did not conduct detailed research or records about them, his reports and diaries were the first source of information about the existence of these mysterious sculptures. So, it is now established that for centuries, the ancient inhabitants of Easter Island, known as the Rapa Nui, carved Moai heads from volcanic tuff and basalt. Human figures were first outlined on the stone wall, and then carved until only the image remained. The excessively large heads have thick brows and elongated noses with a characteristic fishtail shape. Usually, the anatomical features of the backs are not detailed, but sometimes rings and belts are present on the buttocks and lower back. Almost all figures lack visible legs, except for the lone kneeling moai. You are probably accustomed to seeing the eye sockets of these statues empty but scientists have determined that they were intended to hold coral eyes with pupils made of black, obsidian, or red slag. The transportation of Moai statues is one of the most amazing and mysterious parts of the history of these monumental sculptures. Most often, the statues were carved from volcanic tuff on elevated ground. Even now, there are unfinished figures on the island, lying in the ground. Then, they were likely brought down from the mountain by sliding, there is also evidence to support this, as the broken stone heads that did not withstand the descent still lie on the mountainside. But what happened next? After all, the figures needed to be placed on the coast, which meant they had to be moved somehow. To date, the most probable theory is the method of moving statues known as walking. This method involved slowly and carefully rocking the statues using ropes. Modern researchers even attempted to reproduce it, and while moving statues in this way, they acquired chips resembling damage to the original statues. Additionally, after Jacob Rogovin's departure, an earthquake evidently occurred on the island, which toppled and damaged numerous statues. Over 50 Moai were restored after this incident. This is why many scientists believe that the famous hats of the Moai were originally the base of the statue and that the figures may have been assembled in the wrong order. However, this question remains a subject of debate. For example, there is a theory that these hats depict red hair, common among the elite population. Archaeologists believe that the statues were depictions of the ancestors of ancient Polynesians. The Moai statues face away from the ocean towards the villages, as if watching over the people. The exception is the seven Ahu Akivi, facing the sea to guide travelers to the island. According to legend, they await the arrival of their king. Now, a team of American archaeologists led by Joe Ann Van Tilburg claims to have found scientific evidence that the purpose of erecting Moai was to increase the fertility of local lands. Geoarchaeologist and soil scientist Sarah Sherwood assisted the team and conducted thorough research on two statues from the quarry located on the slopes of the Rano Raraku volcano in the eastern part of the island. Here's how she commented on the results of her work. When we got the results of the chemical analysis, I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a very high concentration of elements that I didn't expect to see, like calcium or phosphorus. These are key for successful plant growth and are simply essential for high yields. In other parts of the island, the soils quickly became depleted and eroded as plants drew nutrients from them. 
but in the quarry, where the land was constantly fertilized by small fragments of basalt rock due to construction work, there were ideal conditions for growing crops. Further soil analysis near the Rano Raraku quarry showed that various crops were indeed grown there in the past. Bananas, sweet potatoes, and taro. Observing that the land near the volcanic basalt statues gave a higher yield, the indigenous people could have spread them throughout the island. Thus, the statues actually served as fertilizers. Although with the same, or even greater, success, fields could have been fertilized with volcanic rock ground into small pieces. Our excavations expand our understanding of Moai and make us realize, no matter how obvious something may seem at first, it's not that simple, says Van Tilburg who has dedicated over 30 years to studying the statues of Easter Island. Undoubtedly, the statues also carried religious significance for the local population, as some of them were deliberately carved into rocks to remain there forever. Moai are primarily the living faces of deified ancestors. Perhaps even leaders competed to see who could make the largest statue. The tallest erected Moai, named Paro, was nearly 10 meters 33 feet tall and weighed 82 tons. In total, over 900 statues were erected on the island, considered an outstanding creative and physical feat. And even as of 2023, new statues are still being discovered on the island. Interestingly, 10 or more Moai were exported from Easter Island to various locations around the world, including those exhibited in the Louvre and the British Museum today. Interesting fact, in 2010, the Moai was included as an emoji in Unicode version 6.0. Despite its intended purpose, the emoji is commonly used in internet culture to denote an impassive facial expression or to convey that something is being said in a particularly dry, ironic, or sarcastic manner. Thus, the history of the Moai heads, filled with mysteries and contradictions, has firmly entered into the global culture of humanity.